call our meeting to order. Do my favorite task. <laughs> you know, you're giving us PTSD. I know I am. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, call to order, and I'm going to uh, do roll call first. Tyler Bradbury. Here. Cato Daly. Here. And welcome. Thank you. Melissa Hartman. Bill Higgins. Here. Yes. Wow. Fred Miller. Here. Welcome. We've appreciated your you weighing in on issues when you weren't here. Oh, thank you. Uh, Anthony Underwood. Tom Patterson. Here. Ken Budge, Council Liaison. Here. And Joe Ward. Yep. Okay. You don't count as a staff liaison? It doesn't matter. She's good. <laughs> you, just don't, you don't want the notoriety. I mean, you're ducking something going on here. So, do you want me to read the agenda one? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. thank you. Uh, agenda one item is application by Jared Sheldon, represented for Mr. Byington K. Sims. He is requesting a variance for the property located at 117 Lachlan Avenue, Bisbee, Arizona. <coughs> um, Article 6, General Provision, Section 6.3, Additional Area. Regulations, Subsection 6.3.1. State, Section C, no accessory building other than a private garage or carport shall be permitted in a front yard. Um, it's, we, this, is, this is coming back to us from our last meeting um, where we asked him to go back through the process because um, had, they hadn't completed the process. So we asked them to do that and to come back. So at this point, um, I will open the public hearing. Um, and the, the public hearing is also the same. It's for the variance for Mr. Jared Sheldon. Um, there'll be public comment to support or oppose. None. No. Okay. Are there any questions or comments at this time for the public hearing? Back to those ghosts again. Yep. <laughs> So if you want to close it now. I was going to say, um, I'm going to move to close the public hearing. Okay. Second. Do you need a summarization? Oh, Joe, were you going to speak? I didn't know. That's it. Well, I don't, do we need a summarization? No, I don't. Well, I don't think so. I think if they ask questions. I, I think I, I would appreciate a summarization for some people that hadn't been here before. Okay. If you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Yes. Thank I you. just forgot Thank about you. Joe. When we, when we met before, it would continue this table since um, there was no DRB input. And um, so after, after the, the DRB did meet, and you can you look at your, your um, agendas, I'm sure. But um, the problem the problem why they're having to get a variance is that they put the shed in their front yard, mm -hmm. and, and outbuildings are not allowed in front yards. So um, here we are. Next question. Yes, please. So, can I pick up the sequence of events here? Was the structure being being built, and you stopped it from being built? Yes, I did. How far along was the construction? It's the same as what you see in the photographs that are attached to the agenda. It was um, framed up, and there was a a insufficient slab that was sitting on. Okay, so there was no there was no attempt to get a building permit or anything like that. None. Right. But since then, he's corrected all that. We have well, he's, he's gone through the process. They got a building permit. They do not. No, they not. they can't get a building permit until this process is done. Okay. May I ask you a question? Of course. Um, my understanding is that the DRB um, felt that. Where the tool shed was wanting to be constructed is not would not be considered a front yard. Correct. Yeah. They their ruling was that they may they assumed that the front what they would call the front yard would be where you come up up to lock one. So well, it'll be the the well, east. Yeah. It's east yeah. instead of the where where it is in the front of the house. I think kind of what they were saying is it's a de facto front yard. Yeah. 
So at this time, I, this is a lot of discussion. I want to close the discussion yes. and, and the move public from the public hearing and move into the area where it's a little more oh, um, okay. appropriate. You had a motion and a second to close the public. So just yeah. call for this vote. vote. I, I need a motion. To Do you motion my second? Yeah. Okay. The public hearing is now closed. No, no. You need a... Just throw a vote. Oh, okay. All in favor. All in favor. I'm closing the public hearing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long day. I apologize. Um, we don't have the applicant here. Um, let me move to see. Are there any comments by persons in favor? Mm -mm. No. Are there comments by persons opposed? Mm -mm. Not really. Um, Summation by the city staff, you, you talked about that a little. Can I add to that? Please. You know, when they were here before, um, we, we had a tough time with this too, whether it was the front yard or not. But I have to say that Joe offered them a whole lot of really good options um, that it doesn't appear that they took. Like to remember connecting it to the house and making it more garage-like. So I, I feel like this committee try to work through it with them. That's all I'm going to say. We're in the discussion now? Yes. Okay. We're, we're get, I'm, yeah. I'm commenting as the uh, summarization from okay. the city yeah, staff. If we close everything above. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, we don't have any rebuttal from the act. Uh, we did all this. So, discussion of the variance application among board members, yeah. and that's where we're at. Nice of course. Okay, Joe, looking at this, they came in here. It looks to me like nobody did anything. The design and review board punted it down the road by saying, oh, the front of the house isn't the front of the house. The front of the house is where it's pointing, and so now the shed's not in the front of the house, but the shed is still between the house and the road, and that's what everybody sees when they drive by. So basically, they didn't do anything. They approved it. They approved yeah, it, but they, they did approve it. Well, they did discuss it. How can they it. approve it without all the changes that have to be made? The they can't approve anything without us giving them a variance. The changes didn't have to be made for them to approve it. He's asking for it just to be a structure that's not connected to the house in his DRB application. Yeah. So the yeah. options that Joe gave him right. during this meeting right. last time, he didn't do. He just was asking yeah. that the shed be built on the where it is. Tom? Yeah. Keep in mind that the DRB only deals with the aesthetics. Right. They don't deal with locations they, or... They, they, none of the, what you're doing tonight is not in their purview. Right. Okay, but what I'm saying what is they really did, they, they didn't... They didn't do... The side yard. They haven't really analyzed how that shit needs to be put together because they're waiting to see if a variance is going to be given. Right, right. correct. And what they've done is just said, okay, well, we're going to say the shed's next to the house, not in front of the house. Because the house doesn't point towards the road, it points somewhere else. And I think the intent of the code is we don't want structures being built between the road and the main property because it's going to look junky. You could put anything out there. Next thing, you know, it, it could be all, you could have a little western town sitting there. I don't know. But I think they just kind of said, okay, front's now not the front, so here you go. Yeah, they're saying Board that of you could drive up that way. Yeah, because the house faces another direction, they're saying that the shed isn't in front of the house. Right, correct. And I think the intent of the code was they didn't want structures yes. blocking the view of the house, especially a 20-some foot long shed. And, um, and that is the intent of the code, in my opinion. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's the question. If we determine that that is not the front of the house and it's okay, then they're going to go ahead and build that. If we determine the intent of the code is it shouldn't be built between the house and the road. But they're, they're asking for a variance, which is the same. I understand they're also admitting that it's in front of the house. They're admitting that it's in yeah, right. right. Prove, I mean, if we approve a variance, we're approving it. It's almost like changing the code for them. Simply because they didn't ask anybody before they did anything. No building, no building permit. No, no designer would be more to begin with. And then they come to us for a variance so they go to the designer would be more. They just, and the, the thing, I, I, I just think that this is kind of a weasel way of uh, 
and punting it down the road to us. Um, question? Yes. How many people have been up to actually see the house? Okay. So I've been up there too, and what I saw from Lachlan was this driveway with a bunch of stuff along it, vehicles and some stuff like that. And then the house, which was facing Lachlan that way, and then a carport, and then another, I think another open old structure to the right of the carport. So I don't see, the house is clearly facing that way, the front of the house, the entrance to the house. So I'm not sure that that wouldn't be the front yard. The front yard is determined by where the street is, not the direction of the driveway. That's correct. But the driveway was going up, so the driveway was going up this way, and the house was this way with the front door facing this way. This your right. In your packet. Yeah. Okay, main house. Yeah, so there already is a trailer in the front yard, right? Yes. That's Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that is that a permittable structure or thing? It, there was <clears throat> the one. There's, I think there are several trailers. Mm -hmm. The one was being lived in. They were given a notice of, of a violation that they were going to be that they had 30 days to correct that the occupation of the trailer. And so I don't know if it's gone or not yet. But this was, you know. About that, like they were given that notice violation, and they intended to comply by what they told me. And there is, I think there was another trailer there that, and which we don't have authority. I do not have authority, and neither in, in the um, regulations for the historic district. There's no regulation that prevents somebody from parking a motorhome or a trailer or whatever on their property as long as it's not occupied. As long as it's not occupied, right? Yeah. The death structure it looked to me like it was occupied. The one that was right there next to the shed. That was occupied. Yeah, and then, and then I think from the, the between the main house and the trailer, there was chicken a chicken coop. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Which would the chicken coop would also be in the purview of quote the front yard. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'd like to put this into context a little bit because when you go up there, I mean, this is not an area that. Tourists are going to be looking at, I mean, this is clearly very much a residential area that um, has been occupied for quite a long time. I, um, I know the neighbor that's up there, I don't know the neighbor that's up there. And it's, and it's, you know, clearly things have happened before there was, uh, there were zoning regulations uh, enforced by the city. And so I, I'd just like to have us recognize that I don't know how long these people have lived their uh, uh, yeah, their location, but um, it's so. Part of me kind of wonders if you know we're putting the the cart before the horse because it's um, it's fairly haphazard up there as it is, and I'm feeling as if this shed that's going to be there is not going to be an eyesore because. It, in a way, fits in with what is already occurring up there, and you also, because of the trees and such, it's really it really can't see that house very much from from Lachlan itself. There are a lot of places up, up there. The greater number is very orderly. Uh -huh. Mr. Sims' place is um, more random. Uh -huh. But the, the neighbors to the um, east are are really quite spread out there. It's, it, to me, it does kind of look like that property kind of fit in with that context. There was a complaint by a neighbor that um, doesn't want to be acknowledged. Close neighbor. Okay, but they didn't they didn't submit anything to this committee. No. So we shouldn't consider that. They didn't submit anything. Sure. Yes. Uh, I don't think we should look at the lowest common denominator. If somebody's got a junky looking property, then it makes it okay for someone else to have a junky looking property. Also, even though it's a variance, we set, anytime we give a variance, we set like a new standard. 
precedent. Yeah, precedent. Jim, we let them put this big shed between the road and the house. Then someone else can come to us and say, well, you approved the exact same thing for so-and-so, so we want to put a shed, and they could do that anywhere in Old Bisbee. Again, I think that, for me, I'm looking at it as the context. I'm looking at it as the area. The context is the whole historic district. Joe, I have a question. So when we were here last and you talked to them about attaching it to the house, that, does, that doesn't warrant a variance, is that correct? That is correct. I, 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 the word variance scares me a little. Um, in my mind, if they could just comply with that and, and do their building permit and not get it, I don't see, I mean, they already salvaged things. I don't actually see like we're incurring them even a whole lot more costs or anything. So that's it's just what I want to bring up that, that they've been offered to take this shed, they can keep it where it is, correct me if I'm wrong, as long as the roof is attached to the house and there is no need for a variance, that they can just get a building permit on that. that and didn't they, didn't we also give them the option of changing it from a shed to a detached garage that would also make it where they don't need a variance? Yes. Yes. Because yes. they're allowed to have a garage in front, but not a right. shed. Right. And that structure could have been turned into a garage just by adding the door. Well. Yes. So visually, which is what it sounds like is a big part of this discussion, What's the difference between um, this shed that you're talking about and a detached garage? The difference between the shed and the detached garage is the ordinance. That has nothing to do with stuff. Well, well, it has to be enclosed. Yes. Please, no. go. They would have to, oh, no. there's a lot of work they have to do no matter what happens. It's been stopped, and the, the shed as it is doesn't even meet. Oh, so, and they already have to make it bigger because they do. Yeah, and they would have to enlarge it to make it big enough for a garage. They would have to attach it to the house. I mean, they're saying, and, and that means anybody else that wanted to do that would have to do the same thing. We wouldn't be giving them a variance to do something that the code doesn't, doesn't allow. And, and so they were given a lot of options, and they're, oh, they're hoping that we'll just change saying, well, front in front, so we don't need to worry about it, and do nothing. Then they, it'll be thrown back to design and review, and Joe will go out there, and they're gonna, they're, they've got a lot of changes, even if it was approved as a shed. But I just think that that's not something we can approve for the district. Are there, yeah, I was gonna say, are there further questions? Yes. Is there going to be, uh, is it, could it be plumbed or um, electric run? Mm -hmm. no. I do not believe so. No, so they're going to have a tool and storage place with no lights. Possibly. That's what they're saying. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Can I say something? Absolutely, sir. So, <clears throat> not influenced one way or the other, but the job of the Board of Adjustments is we make, we make a zoning code. The code is nothing between the street and the house. Joe is following that code by saying this does appear between that two. Variances come in the fact that does that apply to this case being the front of the house? So that's to me the bottom line for you all is the saying we're not giving a variance that's cash block across. I know. Sure. Call, call block across the whole town. What we're saying in this particular situation, the street and the house it, are not necessarily what was meant for the code. The code is for a subdivision where there's a normal street, paved street, curb, front of the house. So th that's your job to decide whether a variance would would adapt to this situation versus one that may not. We did that a lot with the DRB. A lot of it is interpretation on, on how, um, and you as the board get to decide that one way or the other. So to me, that's kind of where I would look at it as 
is this variant something that is particular to this unique location versus um, in a subdivision in, in you know, San Jose? That's, that's all. So you're saying that if we grant a variance, it only applies to this property? To the circumstances that are in front of you. Okay. Yes. And every time those come, you have to consider each circumstance individually. Okay. That's what a variance is about, is for that individual. Every time we approve a variance, we're setting a precedent that someone else can come in and cite. I mean, that was the same, it's the same way when you used to be able to appeal your taxes. If they approved a tax reduction for one property, not here, but anywhere in Arizona, and there was 50 other like properties, they all had a justification of their taxes lowered too. So to say it's unique, business unique, I have I have Tombstone Canyon, Pearly, and Evans. I have three streets. There's there's houses like that everywhere where they face all different types of directions. Right. So each and one has to be considered on its right. own. Right. It's got to be, how is it going to look as you drive by? Each one is considered. And I think, uh, I think this is, I don't think we should approve this. That's just my feeling. But well, do we have other comments before I call for a vote? Please, go right ahead. Um, how long has Mr. Sheldon lived in business? He's actually know. not the person that owns the house. He's no. the person that's doing the work for Mr. Byington. So I don't know how long Mr. Byington's been in the house. Mr. Sheldon is just helping him with the construction of the shed and putting his tools in there once it's done is what I understood. I understood. Yeah. So I, one of the things that's bothering me is that this person did not even bother get a building permit in the first place. Well, they so. couldn't get a building permit until the DRB gives permission for them to, to build to use the materials that they want to use for the shed. But initially they never no, no, did. But I, initially what, they no, never did any yeah, of it. Yeah, what I'm saying is that they Jared Shelton started building a structure and somehow Joe got word of it. He right. went out there and said no this is not right and put a stop to it. Mm -hmm. But the structure from photographs was fairly well underway. Yes. Looked like. And mm -hmm. there was no attempt no. to do anything. So Not until Joe gave him the stop order. Yeah, so, I, you know, I just personally don't like that. <laughs> and I understand that people don't necessarily think that they have to do stuff in Bisbee according to mm -hmm. regulations. Well, when he came before us last time, he said he wasn't familiar with the process to be able to build that shed. Right. And But then he also said that he's been doing other construction work, like he said he does stuff for uh, Bisbee Step Up and, and things of that sort. So when I heard that, it kind of was like, if you're in the construction field, but you don't know the process of getting a permit, those two things don't go together. Yes. Um, it's all interesting, but I'm wondering, is, it, is, it that, um, is our job to be looking for outside of parameters of what it is that we're being asked about? We're being asked if this, uh, the location of this shed is something that um, this person could get a variance on the zoning code. And putting aside who the people are, putting aside what they may have done previous to, to this place, that's really not something I think that is um, ours really to be considered. Um, I, I, think it's, I think that our, this, I'm not sure I understand. Okay, what I'm saying is that our job is to um, decide if this variance is something that we want to allow um, from the zoning code for the location of the ratio. Whether he started to build it before he got a building permit, whether or not he knew what the process was to do that. And that do you need the front part That's of not it? something that really, I think, should be part of our decision making process of who this person is uh, and what they knew and what they didn't know. What, what we're deciding is whether or not we want to allow um, this variance of the location of this shed, regardless. So let me, let me say I, I agree and I disagree okay. with you. Um, I disagree with the fact that almost anybody would do their research before they would build a structure. And, and that was not 
done. So I do see that as something we should be monitoring. Um, but I agree with, considering who he is or what he did, I 100% agree with you. Should not enter into our decision. But if if someone on my street is going to construct a shed, they're going to do the research. Absolutely. And, and oh. none of that happened here. They just built it yeah. and didn't got consider caught. anything. And, uh, and the other and thing got caught. The other thing that I, I consider is that he says in there that he picked this location because it was the only level area of the yard. And if you look around Bisbee, there's nothing level there. So for, for them to be using that as their reasoning for putting the shed in that location is, to me, it's kind of a bogus reason. Because it's, you can make a level spot anywhere on the mountain and, and put that in a place where it would not have to come before us. I'm going to go to Joe. You guys have zoning code in your in your agenda yes. packet. Yes, thank and you. If you look at um, the number two, I don't have the other page on but if I remember this correctly, it's, it's that you're actually prohibited from granting a variance if the circumstances applicable to the property are self-imposed by the property owner. That's actually in the statute, not the code. That's in the statute for the Board of Adjustments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying, yeah. So it's, which is part of the code? Right, which is part of the code. Well, and then, again, we have Article 6 in the general provisions. Mm -hmm. No accessory building other than private garage or carport shall be permitted in the front yard. And that's why they're asking for a variance. Correct. Do we have further discussion? Just, just so you know, he, he should not have even done anything without a variance. There should have been no, so it, it's important of what he did because he, he just ignored the whole system. So he shouldn't have done anything without getting a building permit, and he wouldn't have got a building permit without a variance from the board. Yes, of course. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what he knew and what he didn't know. Okay, so so whether he should have done this or should have done that, that's something that I I just can't put into that's my right. into my decision process here. And um, so you know, that's you know, the ignorance of the law doesn't well, I, I make you not applicable. I, I, I mean, I think that I don't think we should assume that this person was being devious when they did this because we, we didn't, don't we didn't know. I mean, there's a difference between deviousness and incompetence. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> I, you know, I, I guess that, you know, I, I, I don't think he was being don't. sneaky. I just oh. don't think he, okay. he's acting as oh, a, a contractor yeah. with no experience and no knowledge of the law. Right. And yeah. so, uh, I don't know, would think if you just Google contracting, how do you go about doing it? One of the things they tell you to do is read the code. Uh -huh. And he just decided he could build a head machine. If Joe had gone by, it would be done and full of tools probably by now. Well, I don't, you know, that's not the first time something like that has happened. Well, that doesn't mean that would be the last. Right, right, you know. right. But nonetheless, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I, what I'm, I'm putting my blinders on in a way, and I'm just being saying that the, the, yeah. the decision and the criteria that we are using to decide whether or not this is a location for his tool shed to be would really be whether or not I think we consider that the front of the house. Correct. The front of the house. None of the other stuff matters. Right. The only thing exactly. the board needs to decide is whether you're going to allow that because that's where Joe calls it the front yeah. of the house or not. But, but, but also, the code calls. Right. Well, I'm just saying, if we or, look or, at it, or, it's well, the front and, of the house, what the code says. And, it, and apparently, it's it's subjective, because the DRB said that it's not the front of the house. So that's... that's so, where Joe, is there anything that states what the front of the house would be, regardless of if your entry is in, you know, the back of the property, the side of the property, the front of the property? Yeah. What, is there anything that determines what the front yard of a property is? Definition. I believe that is defined in the zoning code in the definition. That's where and the front door is. Mm -hmm. Between the area between the, the, the street in front, yes. where your address is, and the house. It's a 6A B 
of the zoning code. Yes, thank you. Article thank 6 you. of the zoning code. No portion of any front yard being that area between the front lot line and the parallel line extended from the front of the main building to the side lot line to be used for permanent outdoor storage. Right, but I think the part, the, the question is um, from the front of the main building. That's the question. Is, is where is the front of the main? Do we building? consider does the front it, based off the of? I mean, if if you have a property that has no structure on it, what is considered the front of the property? Well, Whatever the building permit. Whatever's on the street. Yeah. yeah. The street. The street. Yeah. Yeah. The property. Yeah. So that's Lachlan. Right. And he wants to put the shed here. here. Right. So this would be the front of this street. Okay, and that's, I just wanted to Even though that's that. not where the front door is or where Correct. the driveway is, it's where the, the code says at the front. Right. Right. That's what I think. The D, DMV just punted this down the road. <laughs> well, okay, well, I, I, well, I didn't say the front's I, not the front, so yeah. here. <laughs> but their job is not to decide where the front is but or to say that it's all right. Their job is only, they were giving their opinion, but their job was only to say that the structure he wants to build, the materials he's going to use, were correct. Were correct. Right. And there was no, no discussion of the suggestions that we gave on making it a garage. I did speak to Mr. Sheldon and he did not want to do those, so that's not what was brought before the board. So, is there any more discussion on this? And are we ready to call a vote? I have a motion. I will. I just want to make sure. I move we deny the application for the residence. I second that. Okay. I'm going to do a roll call. Tyler Bradbury. Aye. Cato Daly. No. Melissa Hartman. No. William Higgins. Bill. Aye. Fred Miller. Aye. Uh, Anthony is not here. Tom Patterson. Aye. And that's everybody that votes. So we just need four eyes, two no's. <laughs> Motion dies to deny the correct. application, the variance. Right. Yes. Yeah. Correct. I move that we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I second. And I actually voted wrong. I'm an I. Okay. I didn't understand. You said yes. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> to adjourn. Do you, want to, do you want to change your vote? I do want to change okay, your so vote. Okay, so go back and understand. Let me go one more time. Okay. So Tyler, you're an I. That is to not to deny the application. So he said I. Yes. To, to deny. Why am I to deny the I. To deny. To deny. Mm -hmm. deny the application. I and deny. I and deny. Okay. So Tyler, you're an I. Mm -hmm. Cato, you're an no. Okay. I am an I. William, Bill Higgins? Aye. Aye. Fred Miller? Aye. And Anthony, not here. So that is one. That's five. And I, uh, I voted mm -hmm. two. I, I yes. Vote Anthony. Yes, and I have you. Tom Patterson <coughs> is. So it's five uh, one. It's five one. Mm -hmm. To deny the variance. Now, I'll entertain a motion to dismiss. Bill made, Bill made second it. Second it. He seconded it. So we just need a vote. Or if there's discussion. Is there any more discussion? Okay. Motion carries back to one. The deny. All those in favor? Of, of, of a journey. Of a journey. You know, he, he, he's halfway out of his seat. Look at him. Yeah. He, he he taking his name tag. If you want to go back to other stuff, then vote against the motion to adjourn. Okay. That's correct. Okay. So, so call, call the question. Call the question. Are, uh, all those in favor? A motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.